Hey guys, happy Thursday. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, where we relax and craft and work on a project together. So thanks so much for joining me and thank you replay viewers for watching and thank you YouTube replay viewers for watching. Uh, this will go up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies when we're done here tonight. So thanks for joining. Uh, this is going to be my last night for a while. Uh, if you guys got my email newsletter today, uh, you'll, you have the skinny on that, but I am going to uh, be heading out tomorrow for some holiday time off and I will be back live here on the 3rd where we'll uh, finish up this project, the, the Tweet House project that we're working on now. So today's last night and back on the 3rd. However, I am going to be doing a special uh, Thursday the 28th show here at 8 30. Uh, a lot of you have been interested in my penguin and fish fabric. I, I organized my fabric and realized I had so much more than I thought and I'm going to have a penguin and fish fabric sale. So this is fabric that I designed uh, for Clothworks fabric uh, manufacturer and uh, it's uh, I have every uh, fabric from every collection and you probably can't find it anywhere else because it's all it's all out of prints and you can google some here and there but it's pretty difficult so I'm going to do a sale for that so if you are interested in yardage of penguin and fish fabric or you're missing a fabric that you haven't had uh, that that you're missing um, that you need a little bit more of then uh, the 28th is when we'll be doing that Oh, Susanna, the kitty pins. This is actually, I did this as a free blog post. Uh, oh man, for All People Quilt. So if you go to allpeoplequilt.com and then search for projects and kitty pins or kitty embroidery, it'll probably pop up there. But I will, I'll throw a link in here when I'm done for that. So, all right, guys, I'm going to flip you around. We'll get going. So we're continuing on the Tweet House uh, embroidery pattern tonight. We did the winter version. Uh, now through January 1st, I have a winter version of it. And uh, here's how far we are. We colored it in. So the winter version has like holly and uh, some evergreens around it instead of summery leaves. So that's available when you get the, the digital PDF version or the physical paper version. You'll get an email with the winter the winter bonus pattern in that uh, through through January 1st. So I wanted to let you know about that. And we, the special thing that we're doing with this is the color tinting. So we've done all the color tinting with crayon already. And sorry guys, I'm moving around a lot. There we go. Uh, and uh, last night we stitched the outline on the house. Tonight I would like to get these little cardinals done and uh, the little circles and maybe some of these decorative elements on the house. But I'm itching to do these cardinals, so we're gonna do we're gonna do the little birdies first. And uh, I have loved looking at your projects, your uh, how far you are on your birds on your tweet house in the penguin and fish crafters group you guys are doing such a beautiful job they are so pretty and i just love the coloring in with crayon i think that's just so much fun i'm having a great time doing it it's my first time uh doing the color tinting so uh it's fun to see what you guys are coming up with for that too so if you want to show yours you can join the penguin and fish crafters group on facebook and check them all out there so all right to stitching. We need to get uh, fiber on this before we have the long break. So, all right, flipping you guys around. Okay, let's get this guy in the hoop. I want to get those uh, cardinals stitched right away here. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Tamara. My little kitty pins. Yeah, I had to break out the, the, uh, the house sweater again. So you'll probably, from now through March, <laughs> you'll probably be seeing a whole lot of those kitties and this sweater. <laughs> this is my, my go-to thing once it starts getting, starts getting chilly here in the house. All right, I think that is good to go. Let's tighten this up. All right, I want to start with the birdies just because I can't stand them not being done. Uh, so let's start with 
our pretty corally orangey red that we picked out yesterday. It's called grapefruit, which I think is appropriate. It's like red grapefruit. Oh, you got your minty scissors today. Awesome, Patty. Oh, I'm so happy you like them. Oh yeah, so we're using blueberry today. I'll get my mint I'll get my mint one out today. We'll 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 do mint again. So here's here's the here's the mint. Get those up there again. All right. So let's um let's separate our floss here. So there was that suggestion of just bumping bumping the top a little bit and then you can see the different strands. So let's just grab one strand. We will pull out the three strands. And again, I'm using the three strands just because I like the thickness of line, uh, the thickness of the stitch that comes with three strands. If you use less strands, your stitches will be skinnier. If you use more, it'll be, it'll be wider. Oh, and Libby, you got your purple one too, yay. The eggplants, the eggplant scissors. But yeah, so I'm using three strands. We're just gonna pull them all out separately like that. By uh, by grabbing one strand and pulling it out like that, it it's faster, I think, than pulling them apart, uh, like grabbing three on both end and pulling them apart slowly. There's less of a chance for it to twist up on itself, I think, doing it this way. And it, it lays flatter, the strand, once you put it back together. So, all right. Oh good, I'm glad you guys got your scissors before before Christmas. I think I got them out right on the on the last the last ship day. <laughs> the last um, ship day according to the post office. All right. So, we are back together now. I'm going to get I'm going to get Zeb here. He's got my needles. Let's get the little little embroidery needle here. Yeah, it's way faster. I, I, I agree, Patty. All right, so I'm not going to tie a knot in the end. Oh, look how squiggly those are there. That's kind of interesting. Uh, I'm going to actually just weave it into the back of these stitches and then start this cardinal right here. I'd much prefer uh, weaving into the back of stitches versus having to do the whole away knot. I think this uses less less floss, um, but I'm still not making any knots on the back of my embroidery, and that's that's what I like. I like my no knot embroidery backs, then, then um, my thread doesn't catch on all the knots and giant loops on the back on accident, and I find them later, I hate that, and I don't pull these little itty bitty threads through to the front. That's super annoying. So I, I've been doing this uh, no knot way for, for years. There we go. Ooh, I already like these two colors together. All right, let's check out this little cardinal. You know what? I think I might start out first with his little crest there. So we added that in because that wasn't really part of the, the bird design, but we wanted it to be a cardinal. So I think I'm going to just outline that to even make it more cardinally. And I think I might try and, this guy doesn't have that little crest. I might make his head go up into a little point there to, to imply that he's got a crest on it. Oh man, and I think we picked out this color just right. I think it's it's a little like a pinky red and I think it goes with this crayon just right. I'm stoked. Yay. Better than I thought for for this pinky red. Oh, it's cute. I'm glad I started with the the birds. I was last night I was thinking, "Oh, I'll start with the circles and I'll do these extra decorative stuff around there. We already have the colors picked out. That's our purple. And then uh, the this yellow is kind of this gray and yellow together. I'm using variegated floss uh, for all of this. The variegated just means like it's the color keeps changing throughout the floss. Um, you know what? I'm gonna just jump down to this wing and then start working my way back around here. They both do. Uh, 
the female, they both have crests. So we, I'm very familiar with cardinals. We have a ton of them. Uh, they both have a crest, although the female is actually kind of a brown color, not a red. So maybe I should have made, made that guy up there um, a little browner. But uh, the female still, I think they, they're, they're kind of brownish, but they still have, you know, a little hint of, hint of the red in them. So I think we're okay. Oop, lost my, my guy fell on the ground. All right, let's, uh, I'm just gonna keep curving up around here. Man, I think this is already adding a ton to this. Just the stitching, I think. Just adding dimension and stuff to it. Yeah, the female still has the black face and um, yeah, it's just a little browner. But we have, we have two little red cardinals here. All right, so I, I'm keeping an eye on the original pattern, like the paper pattern, because for one, I can't see where the eyes are anymore because I covered them up in black. And uh, I'm just double checking that this wing doesn't have any other lines in it uh, just because, you know, I, I put all this color on top of it. So if you need to refer back to the pattern, um, that's fine. But yeah, I'll have to refer back for sure to see where, where those eyeballs went. And the eyes I'm going to do with... Um, with French knots. And usually I like doing French knots last because I don't like um, if my thread accidentally like catches on them. You know, if I had a French knot here and I accidentally like caught this thread on it, um, I don't, I don't like that happening because the French knots are so like 3D. So it's easy for things to catch on it. So usually I like to hold those to the end, but it, when it's part of, part of the character, then and I feel, feel like I need to do it. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna outline the beak in, in red too. I'm just gonna keep this whole outline red. I could do orange, I suppose, but I think we're gonna stick to the red. And I don't think I'm gonna outline the black or anything. We're just gonna leave that crest and um, that'll be like the only thing. And then those black, the black eyes. The black eyes will be on the black uh, the black head. So um, you'll just be able to see those with the texture. Oh, Robins are about the only birds that the male and female look the same. Yeah, I mean, they definitely, the, their shapes are the same for sure. And uh, I mean, I'm sure maybe there's super minute differences, but yeah, they, they look the same. Uh, the the uh, females are just a pretty brown tan color. Um, with a tinge of red, but just the brown tan color. But they still have the they still have the face that's black like this, and they're awesome. And they're you know they're out in the winter all the time, which is extra pretty because they're they're so bright on the trees um, with that bright red and against the snow. All right, we're coming down to this other wing. I think we are going to run out of thread before we finish this guy, but we do have that other um, three-strand piece of floss, which is good, because we will um, we'll be able to finish this guy with that, and then we'll hop up here and and work on that guy. Then I think we'll we'll do the purple circles. All right, I think I'm gonna jump down and do his tail and then come back up and get as far as I can. I still have to do this side of the wing. Alrighty. I like him. 
You have a feeder outside your sewing room window and your cardinals are so beautiful. Yeah, we have a feeder outside uh, my window where my computer is. But we haven't filled up, it, we're just mean, we haven't filled up the bird feeder all year because the, we have so many squirrels. We have like, you know, just like 80 bajillion squirrels. So they always just eat all the food. And, you know, we still get birds, but it's just the squirrels. Like we're feeding squirrels. We're spending money on squirrels. So, so I didn't feed them. I didn't feed them this year. So I don't know. I feel bad. Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll put some out uh, when we get back after the holidays. And I think I have a little bit left. And if the birds come before the squirrels, then maybe I'll keep it out. But at least, you know, I didn't train them all summer to know that it's there. So I'm thinking for winter they found some other places to go at least, which is good. So I'm not, I'm not starving them or, or anything. But last year I was pretty diligent on keeping that bird feeder filled up. And it is just so nice to see all the little birds there. And the cardinals are the best. I just love little cardinals. I like the cardinals and I like the little black cap chickadees and every once in a while we'll get like a little goldfinch or something but not so much in the in the winter the winter we get a lot of um a lot of our little cardinals so cute all right I can get a few more stitches out of here so you could really get detailed with this embroidery like you could come back in here and do some little feathers Oh, that'd be actually really cute, but I think I'm going to hold off and I'm just going to do these outlines. Oh, maybe I can get these last two stitches in here. Yeah, I think this might be my last stitch. <laughs> oh, we'll try and get one more. The last one. But yeah, you know, even with like a, a single uh, strand of floss, you could come back in and do a bunch of little short little stitches. I think that would add a lot of texture and be really pretty. Oh, they have some cool um, feeders that deter squirrels. We have not found one that completely deters them. They are pretty sneaky little buggers. We got a fancy bird feeder last time. Um, and they were still... Oh, they, they... It held out the squirrels, but then the, the chipmunks caught wind of it. And they were small enough and they could jump and they could get in it. Your feeder closes with the weight of a squirrel. That's interesting. When they step onto the perch, it closes the feeder. <laughs> That's interesting. I wonder if that would work on chipmunks yet. Because that's, that's problem number two. <laughs> All right, so we have a little bit of a start on the birdie there. So I still have to do that other wing. And then I'll get this guy up here. So, all right. I'm going to just, um, I have this three strands already. I'm going to not separate this, separate them this time. We'll see how it does. Um, without separating them and putting them back together, it can twist a whole lot more. So I kind of want to see, let's see if it does that again. All right, I'm going to weave into the back again here and then start that last line. I really like the idea of it closing. But yeah, where the squirrel can't get it, the the um, chipmunks move right in. So I kind of gave up on it this year. Which is a bummer. I really like watching them. Oh, thanks, Diane. I'm I'm liking him so far. I think he's cute. Alrighty, last little bit. So I'm excited about the fabric sale. Um, so this is my last day. Again, uh, if you guys didn't hear at the beginning or if you didn't get my email today. So I'm going to be uh, off 
until uh, I'll, I'll be back on on January 3rd. So it's quite some time. I think it's the longest amount of time that I've been away. <laughs> but uh, I am going to be back um, not to do the, the crafting, but I will be back on the 28th of December to do the fabric sale. So all that fabric that that I found of penguin fish fabric that I, I, I just, I knew I had it, but I had it stored. And once I got it all out and all in the same place, I was like, geez, I'm never gonna be able to make stuff out of all this. And, and so I'm gonna have a little sale for it. And uh, yeah, it's like probably the only place you'll find some of these fabrics uh, just because it is, they're all out of print. <laughs> I'm not doing fabric anymore right now. And, and you know, how fabric works these days. I mean, a collection is done like every six months at the longest in between. So um, they just go by so quickly and then, then they don't reprint them. People out a security camera. Oh, no. All right, so I'm gonna start with an away knot again, just cause I don't have anything really to weave it in right there. So I'm gonna just, we'll start down here, about four inches or so away. And we'll start by the beak. Oh, you know what? I think the beak was supposed to bend in a little bit, but I just went straight there. I'll, I'll um, bend in a little bit here on, on the beak. Like it was supposed to point in a little bit. And I, I didn't do that on the other guy. Ah, well. Oh, yeah, I hope so, Gretchen. So I have, um, I have fabric from, my, from every collection. And there's about 10 collections, I think. I'll have to count it up again. Um, and then there's about, there's like 12 to 18 different fabrics in each collection, which, oh man, that means there's just like tons and tons of fabric. But it's all that is left probably out there in the world of the fabric. So uh, there's a lot, but of each individual one, there isn't a lot. Um, and, and it's, you know, not really available anymore. So uh, even though there's a lot, it's really, Individually, there's not. But yeah, so I do have, I do have, most of them I have several yards of. And the sale will, will be uh, by the yard. Ooh, I gotta remember, I wanted to put, I wanted to try like putting a little point up here to kind of make this guy have a little crest too. We'll try and fake it a little bit. Adding a little point up here. There, that's kind of a little, a little crest in there. That's enough of, of a suggestion, I think. <laughs> it's kind of goofy, but I like it. Yeah, it's totally goofy. Man, no, I don't know if I like it. <laughs> All right. I can tell it's getting late because I'm getting perfectionisty. Usually I would just be like, eh, that's good enough. But I don't know. I don't like this part right here. I want to angle it a little bit more. So let's pull it out here again. We'll leave this one where it is. Oh, you can use some in the splendid sampler. Nice, Gretchen. That'd be fun. I did use up a lot of a couple fabrics, uh, a couple of my fabrics in the Splendid Sampler, but I, I still have more of, like I used a blue in that quite a bit. So I probably don't have as much yardage of that. There we go. That's, that's a little bit better angle. <laughs> it was just that tiny little bit that was annoying to me. I mean, this is kind of goofy still, but I like it. All right, last stitch of the red. 
Oh, we have the red. I could go do these guys right away. I think I'm going to just, I'll save the entire outer area um, for later. But I think I'll use the same red for like these little holly berries and stuff. So I will, I'll leave this out. Yep, Joyce, I, I already have, um, whenever I did a new collection, I kind of put a few yards aside. Um, but yeah, I might, I might keep a few yards yet. So I'll for sure, for like record sake, so I have like a record of, of what I did for the collections, I have, I have a, like two yards of each collection for that, and I might keep a, a little bit more to use it, but... But we'll we'll see, or maybe I won't. I don't know. I have it for the record, and I don't know if there's anything left over. Maybe I'll just make stuff out of that. Um, all right, we're gonna weave in that other end that we made from the away knot. Yeah, so I might keep like a yard of each for like usable fabric that I can play with. All right. And weave in this end. And I want to do the little French knots while we're still working on these birds. I like the back of this, like this blue gray is really pretty with this red I think all right let's do the black I don't really need much of this I think we'll just do like that much that should be enough for two knots on the top and two knots on the bottom. So I think this is short enough that maybe I can just split it into the three. So this is the other way to split into three is by holding three on each side and pulling it, but you have to pull it slowly. And if it, anything twists up on each other, like it kind of is now, it can get stuck, but luckily this is just a really short piece, so we're we're gonna be okay. But yeah, that's why I like pulling all the strands out individually now better. All right, so I'm gonna weave it in and then stitch the little the little uh, little eyeballs, and then I'll take that other piece and go down here and stitch the little the little eyeballs. So I can't see where I, I drew them, so I am kind of referring, I'm just glancing up at the paper pattern so I can make sure that I get them kind of in the right spot. All right, I think about right here, right in the little cute little black face there. Do a little French knot. So cute with the crayon, I think. And like the crayon with the, the combo of the stitching, I think just really adds a lot of texture. It's just something I'll definitely do again, I think. All right, this is eyeball number two. All right, so there is our first little cardinal. <laughs> He's cute. All right, weaving in the ends, and I'll take that second piece, because this one will probably be a little too short. Take that second black piece and jump down and do the other eyeballs. There we go. Here's our second piece. Your metallic silver is single stranded. Should I triple it for French knots on your snowflake? Um, the, 
The metallic floss I have, I also, I have to double it up. It, it's two strands, but the strands seem really thin. Um, if it looks like three strands, it would kind of equal the thickness of this and you want a knot this big, then I would say, yeah, triple it up. For my particular stuff, I might double it up. Uh, but you might want to do a little test first because metallic floss can sometimes be just super fussy. So it might not want to play along if you put it with a second strand, especially with a, a French knot. So I would give it a test and see if it works. And if it's fine, then I'd say go for it. But yeah, like with metallic, the, the more floss, the more sparkle blobs, I think. So I, I'd say that'd look pretty cute. All right, um, I'm looking at the, where the eyeballs should go again. I think about right there. Now that I've had the red stitched on here, I think I could almost put a little bit more black on his face. From what I read, um, it's not recommended to add more color after you've started. Oh, sure, I can show you how to do that. I'll show you how to do the French knot right now. So, um, so I wouldn't go back and color, but uh, you know, before you start stitching, you can go back and color. So, all right, I'm gonna try uh, the French knot. Yeah, we've done we've done the colonial knot here a couple times. Um, I'll have to do a video of just the two knots next to each other sometime. I think that'd be a good idea. Uh, but all right, so I'm going to zoom in and we'll do this French knot. All right, so I'm way in here. So I uh, some a few things that you want to know about a French knot is you don't want to come up and go down back in the same hole. So I'm going to come up right here. Usually I start at the bottom right hand of the dot. I mean, here you can't really see the dot. And then I set it on the ground. So right now I'm no hands, it's on the table. I'm gonna hold the uh, thread up from, from where it's exiting the fabric there. And then I'm gonna come back down with my needle and my needle is pointing away from the fabric. It's not pointing towards, okay? So it's not pointing towards the knot, it's pointing away. And then I'm gonna wrap around twice. And then I'm gonna put my fingers here just to hold those loops in place. And now I'm gonna go back towards the fabric. So I, was, I, I wasn't at the fabric, I was pointing away, point away, wrap twice, hold it with your fingers, then point towards it again. And now I'm gonna go back in the fabric, but not in the same hole. I'm just gonna go like a few threads over. And once I have the needle a little bit of the ways in, I can let go with my fingers and then I'm gonna pull those loops tight against the base of the fabric and, and um, against the needle. And then I'm gonna pull the needle through, but I'm going to hold, put a finger there, like a thumb or a finger, just to hold those loops in place because now there's nothing holding them in place because it's not in the needle anymore. And I'm gonna slowly pull the fabric or the thread through until, uh, until it's all the way at the knot. And that is a fringe knot. So those are cute little birdie eyes. All right, I'm gonna weave those in and our little cardinals are done. All right, there we go again. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so I will do, we'll, I'll show you that again once we get to the, those holly berries because those I'll do all French knots as well. And uh, if you've done any, any of these other embroidery projects with me, I, I focus a lot on, on French knots, but we'll, uh, we'll do it again for sure. All right, there we go. And snip. And that is it for the two birdies. Yay. So here they are up close. Little cardinals. Yeah, I really could have um, put a lot more black in there now that I'm seeing it, but I think there's just a hint of it. 
Uh, I think this crest helps to really show that it's a cardinal and yeah, I'm okay with it just like that. Um, all right, let's do these purple circles here. We don't need much of this purple, I don't think either. So I'm just gonna get like, you know, I have about 12 or maybe, I don't know, 14 inches or so. I'm gonna use one to go around this one and the other to go around here and I don't think, Oh good, yeah, <laughs> let me know. If you ever have any questions on stitches or anything, we can go over over some again. We'll do another stitch, we'll do another how-to stitch video too. Um, we haven't done one of those in a little while. All right, I'm gonna just try pulling these apart again because this is a little, it's kind of a short. Oh, see, look, it gets a little difficult this way. I gotta let it relax. There we go. Next time I'm I'm doing it the way I usually do by pulling this the strands out. All right, uh, needle. So I'm not going to use the away knot because I have enough stitches nearby that I can weave it in. So I'm going to weave this one into the the cardinal here and then jump over and then go go around here. Ooh, this purple is so pretty. And this purple uh, thread is called sugar plum, which is appropriate for this time of year. So I think that's kind of fun. All right, trim that. Oh yeah, Randy, that's that's what I used to do too, is if you hold it in your mouth, then it, it kind of keeps it, it taut. But it's tough, like if you're using like a long strand of thread and and uh, if something else goes wrong, then you can't set down the threads. I, I'm just, I very much like the pulling the single strands out. I think it is just a lot faster. It seems super duper weird. Um, but, uh, it it works really well. You know what? I am not sure what sugar plums are. So it's just like, and visions of sugar plums dance in their heads from "Twas the Night Before Christmas." That's that's what I know about sugar plums. I don't know. Is it a candy or something, or is it actually? It might just be. It, it's probably plums that have been canned and candied. Maybe, like if you, if you were to think, you know. Maybe it's some old German thing or something. I don't know. Um, but if I had to guess, they'd probably be candied plums. Like maybe how you can candy like orange peels or something. Maybe you just, uh, I don't know, cook it down in a bunch of sugar or something. That seems maybe logical, right? I don't know. <laughs> I'm thinking it's sugared fruit that they use as a that they have as as just like a as a candy oh are they they're just baby plums <laughs> all right that's funny i have no idea all right oh i like this little variegated look we're starting kind of like a pale purple and then it's getting getting darker oh you don't like them sugar plums all right, I have enough thread, I think, on this one to do this up here, but I am gonna weave it in before going up there. This uh, variegated floss really changes colors quite a bit, which is kind of neat. It's kind of the fun of it. You'd rather have big plums. <laughs> so man, baby plums, but then they still have like the pit and everything, right? That's gotta be kind of annoying. All right, I'm gonna, I think I'll have just barely enough. So I'm gonna weave in the end here. It's kind of getting packed over there, we'll go here. Visions of sugar plums. They must be semi good if a little kid is having visions of them in his dreams. <laughs> they must be some sort of yummy thing.
All right, let's attempt to uh, go around this with the thread I have left. Google, they are candied, plumbed, rolled in sugar. Look like donut holes. Oh, for funny. Candied plum. Maybe, uh, oh, like donut holes. I was thinking like donuts. I was thinking, oh, maybe they pop the, uh, the pit out of it. <laughs> candied plum rolled in sugar. So yeah, they must just cook them way down or something. Or they probably cut the pit out of it, then cook them in like sugar water until they like reduce or something probably. And then sprinkle some powdered sugar or something on top. It says in my school dictionary, a sugar plum is a bonbon. Sweet meat. Oh, really? Oh, man. Interesting. Oh, that's going to be the, uh, the thing we figure out over Christmas. Oh, is it Gretchen? Yeah, the silver metallic is tricky thread. Yeah, sometimes it does not want to um, participate, especially with a... Uh, with French knots. So yeah, you'll have to go really slow, I think. Oh, funny. <laughs> All sorts of different definitions of sugar plums. All right. And there is the purple. So we're starting to really define the shapes again. I mean, before, you know, with just the, the crayon, it kind of all blends together, but now like outlining it again, I think that's really uh, helping things along here. So awesome, we're done with the purple. I think we'll get started on this yellow. I don't know if we'll get done with the yellow tonight, but it'd be kind of nice if we got done with that. Then we'd have um, just about the whole house done. Um, I won't, I think I'm going to wait for the silver to do the, the top of the house, the roof of the house. So I was going to try and do the silver in here. Oh yeah, like Gina, that's what I would expect them to be, like little dried fruits like in a fruit cake. Yeah, they'd almost be like kind of like natural gummy bears almost, right? Um, all right, so here's the the uh, yellow. Probably don't need a ton of this either. Hopefully this is enough. So I think I'm gonna just, since this is a little lighter, I think I might just weave in the end up here and make this leap. All right, now I'm gonna pull them out individually though, I think. I just, I like doing it this way better. That's one. two, and three. See, it's just quick, and it looks like it bunches up and is full of knots, but it's really not. Oh, your, yours is from a Canadian dictionary. <laughs> we need the origins of sugar plums. And unless they're British, they're probably not called sugar plums in that other country. So I wonder, I wonder if it's, um, you know, some totally different foreign word that's been translated to sugar plums. All right, I'm going to weave in right there and then jump over to this little star. This is uh, different than on the, the original pattern. The original Tweet House pattern has little uh, kind of lazy daisy flowers here instead. And, and I changed them to these little, little kind of star windows almost. Ooh, the four strands of silver is working good. Good, yay, I'm glad, uh, glad you found a solution, uh, Gretchen. All right. Now we're starting kind of gray in this variegation and then it gets like this really kind of citrusy uh, yellow green. I think we'll, you know, here we could try 
doing a fly stitch. Let's, let's try doing that or like an open chain stitch. So I'm going to go all the way to the other end and I'm going to come up in the middle and catch, catch this loop with one extra little stitch. There we go. So I've kind of made like a little arc that's kind of, of attached down like that. So I'll show you again. So I have never made one of these like this wide apart. So I'm, I'm making my thread go in the same arc, the same uh, place where that arc is. So the arc goes this way. And so my thread's going to go that way too. And then I'm going to go back in the second hole here. And then before I pull too far, I'm going to go right in the center of the arc, that like midpoint center where it's most arced. And then I'm going to come up. And since I'm in the most center there, it's going to stop the thread from going any further. You know, if I went down this way, then the thread could flop all over the place. But because of this, th but uh, because of this piece here, um, it stops and I'm going to just tack it down by going right on the other side of it. And uh, there we go, holding that little little loop in place. So we almost get a little arc going there. Um, I, ooh, I kind of like it and I like even seeing that little that little tack down stitch there is pretty cute. Yeah, kind of crescent moon shape. So I'm always making my thread you know, I can, I can hold it with my thumb too, but I'm always making it go the same direction as the arc. So this time it's going this way. Because I want to make sure that I'm stopping it by coming up in the middle. And if, if the arc was going the other way, then I wouldn't be stopping it. So there we go. There's, uh, there's that one. Just going, tacking it down by stitching on the other side of the arc. There we go. And we got one more here. Man, that's a quick way to do it too. All right, making sure the arc goes down this way. And come back up before I get too far, right in the center. And stop it with that extra little stitch. There, that was quick. That's pretty cute. All right, so I'm going to weave in the end and then I will start it up again down here and we'll do all, all three of these. Man, so that's going to go a lot faster too. Uh, just, you know, it's four little stitches instead of a whole pile of back stitches. So I think we'll for sure get get the this house done tonight, which is awesome. Then, then when we get back on the third... Oh, I don't know if you guys read in the email. So on the third is when I'll be back. And so the third is a, um, a Wednesday, I think. So Wednesday through Friday, we'll just work on finishing up some projects. So on Wednesday, we'll come back to this and try and finish it up. And then, let's see, where do I have to go? Right here. And then on the Monday, the first full week that I'm back on the Monday, that's when we'll start the... Krista Quilt's uh, Chevron Quilt, the Charming Chevron's Quilt Pattern. Oh man, did we just cut out for a second there? I think we might have just, just cut out. So uh, hopefully you guys are still there. Just still weaving in the end here. All right, I'm just kind of holding the red ones to pop out here. So let's trim that and we're ready to go again. Are right, you here still? Okay, good. Yeah, I just noticed on my monitor that it was the spinning, spinning blob, trying to reconnect blob. I hate that blob. Where'd my thread come out? All right, I think I'm gonna, we're gonna start right here. All right, good, yay! Thanks for sticking around with me. So I'll zoom in a little bit for this this one. So we'll get real close on this on this stitch. Hopefully I don't shake too much for you guys. But all right. So 
Um, the arc is going down like this, like it's just a subtle U in this, this direction. So I'm starting on that stitch, coming back down here. But before I get too far, I'm going into the center of that loop, making sure that arc is uh, down this way. Oops, there we go. And coming back up and tacking it down. Some of these are a little bit more uh, straight looking lines than the others, but they all have that little subtle arc in. And now I just kind of like that little tack, that little tack down stitch in there, so I want to make sure that that matches with all of them now too. There, that one's more of an arc. Let's tack that. Pretty. We're getting into more of the yellow of that variegated floss. Right now the arc's going, going that way. Oh, I'm maybe a little too close. I keep moving. Come back up before you get too far. There like that. And tacking her down. And one last one last one. And we'll just jump down to to the next uh, little diamond. Yeah, like a little star. With those extra little extra little sparkle lines in there. Alright, there's the first one. So let's just hop right down to the second feller there. Look at our little bird, so cute. All right, and again, I'm just making sure that I keep my arc of the thread in the same direction of the arc of the stitch that I'm doing. So I can catch it and then tack it down on the other side. Got a little V going. And this is actually the same stitch that I'll be doing up on the, that I'll be doing up on the roof for these Vs, but I'm just gonna be doing one. I won't be connecting four together. You know, so just this one guy right here is the same as what we'll be doing up here. All right, make that arc go the same way. We're running out of thread a little bit, so I'm gonna have to maybe move that arc right at the end, right before I do the stitch. Ooh, see, now we're going back into that gray tan color, which is kind of kind of neat. There, get this arc going that way. Man, I am not sure I'm gonna have enough thread for this. I did take a, I did, I did do more thread. Let's go up this way and then come down. Um, oh gosh, I hope I have enough with this, just this strand though. It's gonna be close. Move this loop out of the way. All right. Okay, and let's see if I can get the rest. So I think, um, you know, we're going a little bit behind the cardinal here. So I think this guy down at the bottom, that just should be just a little back stitch. I don't think we need to do the whole arc there. So let's do that guy now, just a little back stitch. All right, I gotta get two more of these arcs out of here and enough to weave in weave in the, the thread. So I don't know, it's gonna be close. No turning back now. All right, and stacking it down. And last stitch. I think this will probably be the last stitch of the night, guys. And then we'll, we'll weave it in. Last stitch of the year, actually, right? Um, since I won't be back till the third. Uh oh, I pulled the thread a little bit. Separated the thread a little, so let's pull it back together. All right. Tack it down, and there, our little, our little stars are done. Let me zoom out for you guys. 
They're cute. All right, I'm gonna zoom the rest of the way out and we'll weave in the end. We'll weave it into this cardinal's back of his wing here. Still trying to catch as many threads as I can. Oh, thanks, Gretchen. I I like him, little cardinals. I think they might be my favorite bird. I like I like uh, cardinals and I like black cap chickadees. I think those two might be my favorite. There we go. All right, so there we are tonight. Let me just show you guys up close. We got our little cardinal and the little. Uh, gold little stars in there and the roof. So we have the whole, the whole middle done. Uh, so when we come back, we'll work on all the sparkles and the fun greens and everything on the outside. So I'm going to do, um, we'll do this, the, the sparkle floss last. So it'll be either this silver or this kind of colorful silver, which is kind of fun. I'm kind of tempted to use this just because I've never used it before. Um, but yeah, so we'll use some version of these sparkles. And then, you know, we'll get some greens and, and yellows and um, reds back in here for like the, the holly and, and some blues and stuff too. So we'll have to pick more threads again, which will be fun. But awesome, guys! I'm going to flip you around and uh, we'll, uh, we'll call it a night soon. I'm going to miss you guys too! It's going to be so long! Oh, man. I don't know. I'll, I won't know what to do with my evenings. I won't have anyone to hang out with anymore. So, all right, here, here we are. Oh, it's coming together. Look how well it outlines everything now. I'm stoked. Oh, let me get it out of the hoop quick. Oh, thanks, Sharon. Yes, they are uh, itching for us to come. My brother keeps, keeps texting us like, where are you guys? So we are gonna head out tomorrow and hang out with the fam. But there we go. Oh, I love him. Alrighty. So Merry Christmas to all you guys as well. And have a great uh, time off. And um, I will be back on the 28th for the fabric sale. So after Christmas on the, the 28th, we'll have the last chance uh, penguin fish fabric sale. I will send a reminder email out because, you know, I won't be here reminding you guys. So uh, keep an eye on your emails. And then the third, the third we will be back. We'll finish up this little cardinal and uh, then we will start the Charming Chevrons pattern by um, Krista Quilts. So awesome. Oh, thank you. I will, I will try to drive carefully. Luckily there's not, we didn't have the huge snowstorm that they said we were going to have. So I think it's going to be clear roads. It's just going to be really cold, but that's what heated seats are for. <laughs> All right, guys, have a great holiday and I will see you on the 28th. Good night!